Welcome to a tutorial on op amp circuits part 4 today and uh, today in this tutorial okay I'm going to show you about the advanced mathematical applications that uh, the op amp is used to perform back in the uh, time when it was created in during the time of 1960s okay so today um, the first circuit I mean the first mathematical or computational circuit which I'm going to show you here is the differentiator okay made using the op amp okay so here we have the differentiator okay so uh, the differentiator circuit is basically uh, you know a circuit created using the uh, op amp in which what happens is that basically the circuit uh, differentiates okay the uh, input voltage with respect to time okay so if I just you know uh, try and draw the circuit uh, of this uh, differentiator circuit okay right over here so there you go we have the negative and the positive inputs of the op amp and in this circuit too uh, the non-inverting input of the op amp that's the uh, positive input right over here as you can see is being grounded okay so here uh, of course we'd have our uh, you know feedback path consisting of a resistance right over here there you go so here we obtain our output voltage and right at the input we have or rather you know I just you know draw it a little further away so that you might see it clearly okay so there we have a capacitor and uh, right here we apply our input voltage that's VI of course so let me just call the capacitor C and uh, this resistance we termed as R okay no problem so this is basically the circuit of a differentiator as you can see here so um, yeah just selecting a different color okay so uh, as you can see here uh, depending upon the changes in this uh, input voltage right over here it'll cause you know uh, a certain amount of you know current to flow through the capacitor okay a certain amount of current to flow through the capacitor right there okay so and this current uh, will you know uh, eventually uh, go through this uh, feedback resistance that's R over here and straight into the output terminal of the op amp okay and uh, like as we've told you before that uh, as you can see here that uh, the non-inverting terminal being grounded okay which is of course the actual or uh, you know physical ground over here so since it's been actually grounded okay it's at the ground voltage which is uh, zero volts and um, due to the uh, extremely high gain of the op amp this uh, voltage at the non-inverting input is you know reflected back to the inverting input of the op amp like as in the previous cases as you can see I mean as you've just uh, seen in our previous tutorials and hence this terminal uh, let's say I call it terminal G over here corresponds to uh, the same as the ground voltage okay so the terminal G now here suffers from the condition of you know a virtual ground okay so the terminal G acts as a virtual ground over here okay so therefore if we just you know try and uh, write down the equations okay uh, for the output that we're gonna which we're gonna you know uh, get over here so let me just write the equations okay as you can see here uh, we have a current that should flow through the capacitor okay so we know that the voltage across the capacitor is just uh, it's uh, you know a charge held by the capacitor divided by its capacitance so keeping in that in mind you know we can just uh, if we just you know differentiate this equation on both sides let's say we have C and uh, let's say we have VI over here which is the input voltage right here okay that's equal to the Q and now if you just go on and uh, take the derivative of uh, this uh, equation over here then we'll get C dVi dt and we're taking the derivative you know as you can see here the uh, derivative is taken uh, with respect to time okay so we're differentiating this equation with respect to T okay where T represents time so here T represents time okay so there you go so uh, yeah and over here we got dq dt so we know that the variation of uh, charge with respect to time that's dq dt actually represents the current okay so if we just you know uh, look at this equation then we can see here that c dvi dt actually represents the current 
through the capacitor that is the I right over here okay so if we just you know uh, straight away uh, take this equation so we get therefore C dVi dt that's equal to the input current okay that's very good and now since uh, due to the op amp having a very large you know input resistance this current cannot enter into the op amp through its input terminals so what it does is that it just takes the other path I mean through the feedback resistance and straight to the output so here also the same uh, value of current should flow so therefore the current flowing through the resistance are right over here can be you know uh, calculated in some of this manner if we just you know um, yes yeah, so we can write it this way so G minus VO so uh, yeah that's by R should be equal to the current flowing through itself so we know that uh, since G is approximately equals to zero volts so we have I equals okay minus VO by R so therefore uh, we have two equations okay this is equation one okay and uh, now we, this is equation two so if we just go forward and combine it, both them I mean both of them okay so combining one and uh, two we're gonna get something like this we're gonna get minus VO by R is equals to C DVI DT okay so and just now you know modifying this a little we get therefore VO equals to minus CR DVI DT so this is the exact equation that we've been looking for and as you can see from this equation that uh, the output voltage is basically uh, or rather yeah, is basically you know, directly proportional to the derivative of the input voltage right over here and here minus CR represents a constant factor or rather a proportionality factor I just call it proportionality factor so there you go so this represents the proportionality factor okay and if ever this minus CR okay is equals to 1 okay if ever we get this minus CR equals to 1 then we could have the output voltage equal to the derivative of the input voltage as you can see here alright so using this circuit we can just you know differentiate or rather we can obtain the derivative of any kind of input signal applied at the inverting input of the op amp okay so that was our circuit number one and now we have our circuit number two so enter the integrator okay so there goes another you know application I mean math mathematical or computational application okay so uh, we have here the circuit of the integrator which looks or rather would look somewhat like this okay so there we go and like as before we of course again ground the uh, non-inverting input of the op amp okay and uh, here if you just you know compare uh, this circuit uh, to the previous one then you'd get a striking simil I mean uh, similarity over here uh, but with a little twisted difference okay so if you just take a look at this circuit you'll understand yourself okay so there we go so if you just take a look at the circuit and uh, compare it with the previous one over here you can see that the positions of the uh, capacitance and the res I mean the resistance over here has been just reversed okay they have been just swapped so uh, in case of the feedback path we have the capacitor okay serving as the feedback uh, element okay and at the input we'd have the resistance right over here so uh, as we know that uh, there should be a current flowing through this uh, resistance right over here in this direction okay and now this current you know would obviously not enter uh, the op amps input due to its very very high input resistance but it'll just flow through the capacitor and out into the output terminal okay so now as before okay as in the previous cases we've seen that uh, since the non-inverting input is being grounded so uh, the ground voltage over here that's zero volt gets reflected right at this point the terminal G okay which is of course suffering from virtual ground condition right in this case okay as before so here the voltage of course lies 
you know approximately equal to the ground voltage so therefore if you just you know try and uh, frame out the equations um, for the operations of this you know circuit then we'd get something like this okay let's just find out the current flowing through uh, the resistance R so we'd get uh, let's say yeah VI minus uh, you know G over here by R that should be equal to I okay so that's the equation so we know that G is approximately equals to zero volts so therefore VI should be equal to uh, yeah so VI by R over here yeah that's right should be equal to the input current okay so there we go and now uh, we see that the current okay enters through this capacitor alright so now if the current is supposed to enter through the capacitor then in that case you're right now uh, the current uh, you know uh, just flowing through a capacitor is as you've seen uh, you know from the uh, previous uh, example right over here the current flowing through a capacitor is just given by C D V I D T or rather C D V D T okay so we'll use this relationship right over here so we know that the current flowing through a capacitor is just given by C D V D T okay so that's pretty simple so now uh, if we just you know um, look at this uh, example right over here uh, I mean this equation that let's just call it equation one so if you just look at over here I mean this equation over here we see that the current flowing uh, through this resistance right over here which should actually you know uh, flow in turn through the capacitor as well uh, sometime later is equal to VI by R so I just put it right over here let's say this is equation two so I just put it over here that's VI by R okay and that is equals to C dV dt. So now uh, we need to be particular about which voltage you know, actually is falling across the capacitor. So if we just you know, take a look at the circuit again, we see that the voltage falling across the capacitor is just you know, uh, G minus VO. So since G is approximately equals to the ground voltage so we have the voltage I mean the voltage across the capacitor as you know minus VO so we'll just put it right over here so therefore uh, here since V equals to minus VO so this equation you know gets modified okay let's call it equation 3 so, uh, so we get or rather we just you know putting uh, V equal to minus VO in 3 will get something like this we'll get let's say yeah vi by r equals to uh, minus c okay dvo by dt all right so now uh, we need to you know find out the output voltage so that we we can you know just have to uh, make the output voltage that's vo the subject of the formula okay so since we need to make a vo the subject of the formula so uh, we need to integrate this okay so for that you know we'll just do a little topsy-turvy of this equation or rather just modify it this way so we're getting one I mean uh, yeah one by I mean sorry minus one by CR right over here okay VI DT alright and uh, there you go so DVO so we're integrating it on both sides so here we have let's say we'll integrate from 0 to the output voltage as VO and from here we're just integrating from 0 to T so doing this we just you know obtain the output voltage VO equals to minus 1 by CR okay there we go um, integration 0 to T VI DT so this was exactly the equation that we were looking for all this while okay so here you can see that the um, output voltage right over here is directly proportional to the integration of this input uh, voltage signal applied at the you know negative input of this op amp right over here so uh, here as you can see this uh, minus 1 by CR is the proportionality factor okay so I'll just write it down proportionality factor okay and uh, if ever if uh, you know minus 1 by uh, CR is e equal to 1 then uh, we can get VO equal to integration 0 to T VI DT so if 
minus 1 by CR is ever equal to 1, then we can get the output voltage as equal to the direct, you know, integration of the uh, input voltage signal. Okay, so having said that, we just uh, round up our discussion over here. I uh, hope you've enjoyed our tutorial and don't forget to watch the next tutorial on op -amp. So till then, it's thank you for now and uh, goodbye.